How goes the rantalicious ranting ranters? This is Burn. And this is Rye, and you are listening to the Bodacious Rant with the obviously amazing Burn and Rye. How are you, my friend? It is now October. Can you believe it? My shirt sure can. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, I mean, I, I went to sleep and it was March and I woke up and it's October, man. <laughs> yeah, your beard really shows it. <laughs> I'm just like, what year is it? <laughs> just all jumanji it out where it just <gasps> has that crazy eyes, the crazy hair, everything. But no, honestly, that's how it feels. Again, we're in October. We're in the spooky season. Doesn't feel necessarily spooky, though, to me, just because I'm I, spooked. I can't go to horror nights. You know, elections coming up. I mean, it was a little scary. Who, who are we kidding? But the fact that I can't enjoy it, the festivities associated with this is disappointing. Yeah, it's not like the ghouls and goblins and witches and stuff that are scaring us. It's uh, real world stuff. Exactly, exactly. You you nailed on the head there, my brother. Um, well, what's have you? A lot of crazy news too. I mean, I know a lot of delays again. I I kind of hoped it would stop at a certain point, but this year is just even more fruitless i know we've talked about some of the upcoming movies we wanted to see like dune we did we talked about that trailer breakdown and now it feels it's like all a waste because it got pushed to next year yeah october of next year right yeah it took batman's release date and now the batman won't release for another six months after that five months in march march of 2022 right yep this is just getting better (laughs) better. and today Today we lost another legend in entertainment. Eddie Van Halen died. God, uh, yeah. his fight with cancer, unfortunately. Like I said, dude, this year is just bleak. But at least we still have some stuff. Mandalorian is still coming out. The Boys has provided a great season, which we will talk about next time. Oh, and, yeah. Lots to talk about there. And there there have been some movies out. I, we waited a bit, partially just because I lag on watching those. Also, just so that way we give everybody time just so we can discuss it. And see what everybody thinks of them. Which let's uh, shall we tell everybody what we're what we've seen and what we're going to talk about? Yeah. So Netflix has come out with a couple of movies the last couple months, so we can talk about those. Them being The Devil All the Time and Enola Holmes. Absolutely. Which one are you feeling to start off with? You want to start off with something dark and depressing, or do you want to kind of go into lighthearted yet mysterious feel? Uh, let's do it in the order that I told you to watch it. And let's start off with dark and depressing, and then let's let's lift the spirits up afterwards. <laughs> and you are not wrong. So, The Devil All the Time, which premiered on Netflix on 9-11, which, again, is just another strange time to release it on. <laughs> That's not a great date by any means in American history. So oh, it's yeah. kind of funny. Directed by Antonio Campos, who... By all accounts, I've never really seen his work. So, I mean, I, for those of you who have, yeah, okay. So, not you haven't either. Okay, that good. No. Better. But for those of you who have, you know, sorry, we haven't, we don't know all of his stuff. It, and it stars the incredible Tom Holland, Robert Pattinson, Bill Skarsgård, and Jason Clark, Riley Keough, who is. You know, she's another great up and coming actress, in my opinion. Sebastian Stan, Haley Bennett. And fun fact, the this movie does have a narrator in it. It definitely is like someone reading a book. And that was the writer himself, Donald Ray Pollock. So the writer yeah, was the narrator, true. which I thought was pretty fun. Yeah, and, that's a cool touch. Yeah, absolutely. And I will say this. It's just what I'm trying to say is this movie's cast five stars i cannot give them enough that they they all suited their their roles very well yeah i agree 110 <laughs> percent. just 110 percent. you know they act good you want them to act good i think they act pretty good in this movie <laughs> <laughs> you know there's no i the word team this is a team it was a team effort i'm just really proud to say that i've i've had the pleasure of, of seeing them on netflix <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like I said, just when you when you look at Tom Holland on in this film, Robert Pattinson, and and even again Jason Clark, who's not in a whole lot. He was in Public Enemies, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. He was recently in. Um, I can't think of I can't think of the stuff like recently off the top of my head, but he's one of my favorite actors. He just delivers a great role every time he works, and he just puts in one hundred ten percent, just like you yeah. said. Were you thinking Pet Cemetery? Yes, Pet Cemetery. Movie was garbage, but he was still good. 
I, I still right. I haven't seen it, but I know he was in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. I, that's probably why I forgot it, because I did not enjoy that movie. And Sebastian Stan. Yeah, uh, some of these guys are completely unrecognizable. Sebastian Stan's one of them. I will say I did not. Like, I knew it was him off the top of my head, but just the way he carries himself, his, his character's role was just so different to what he's done so far. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people will recognize him definitely from being the Winter Soldier. I don't really know if he's been in a lot of things outside of that rule, but this one is very different from the Winter Soldier by far. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, it's definitely different. And is in, a, in, a, in general, it's definitely good to see them in different roles, like Tom Holland and Sebastian Stan specifically, because right. they've been part of the MCU for at least four years, you know, Sebastian Stan more, and all, obviously. Mm-hmm. But I love seeing Tom Holland as something different. He was a much grittier, tortured character. And you know, let's let's let everybody know the plot, which is basically this: an orphan boy lives with you know an, another orphan uh, family member, sister, essentially, and they just kind of live through life dealing with the loss of their parents, religion in a post-war you know southern town. Uh, would you say that's right? Yeah, that's about right. I mean, that's. Uh... That's their storyline. And there's just a few in this movie that intersect later on. Yeah, this is definitely a very it's almost noirish in a way, because it's just in a different setting where it definitely focuses on the pros and cons of religion, essentially. And the devil is what the title in itself, the devil all the time, you know, a much more religious figure instead of like horror or anything else like that, in my opinion. And the title doesn't lie. The devil all the time really is the devil all the time. Uh-huh. <laughs> when you t- when I I mean when I was watching it because I know you told you watched it first and like okay you got to watch it in this first so let me let me get your first thoughts on this. How did you feel about it when you first saw it? I thought it played out like a really cool crime novel essentially. I mean yeah it is based on the novel and then of course the, you know the person who wrote the book is the one that's narrating the story. But I kind of, I kind of like the, uh, just the whole, you know, like the backwater priest, you know, this whole like small town feel of where like, you know, everybody knows each other and people are like just kind of in this like dingy environment and that kind of like eeps into their characters as well. So I mean, I kind of enjoyed like living in the muck, you know, as as you would you would say it for a little bit with these characters, you know, seeing just how like really messed up life could be in, in that time. And with all these, like, bad things people do to each other. I mean, okay, like, the movie's not, like, an enjoyable watch. But, like, if you're in the mood to, like, kind of feel icky about yourself, then this is a good one to watch. <laughs> I feel like you're not wrong there. It definitely is a movie you have to be in the mood to. It was it was a struggle. It, it wasn't just because, again, the actors did such an amazing job. The story was pretty entertaining for the most part. But it is by no means a movie you can just pick up and watch when you're in, like, in a good mood. You'd have to be either super bored or maybe just in like a mood to kind of feel somewhat depressed, I guess, if that makes sense. Not, not that you want to feel that way, but you know, you're, just, you're in the mood to watch something dark, I would say. Yeah, yeah, that's that's how I would describe it. Like if you're like when people are in the mood to like listen to these like true crime podcasts or like read like a really like really, like again like a really dark novel. Or something like this is kind of like one of those like if you're in the mood for for that type of thing then this is that type of movie for you you know watching it i for i'm pretty sure you've seen this one but it reminded me a lot of place beyond the pines starring ryan gosling and bradley cooper yeah yeah it did just because how both storylines i mean i'm trying not to spoil it too much but just take it at this that they both start off with the the parental figures and then it translates more into the younger generations and how they deal with the aftermath of you know their parents legacies as you will but also yeah, paying for the sins of the father type thing yeah where in this one it was more of just trying to you know be positive about what your family went through but also just moving forward it, it's a little hard to describe just because Tom Holland's character, Arvin, his father, who play, was played by Bill Skarsgård, just ultra-religious family, and he didn't want anything to do with religion. He's just like, I don't pray, I don't care for that, don't bother me with that. And I, a lot of people can relate to it, but also for superficial reasons, where his reasons were just very tormented and just 
just very sad. Like I, I completely understood why he didn't want anything to do with religion, just because. It, like, like I said, that's what this movie does a great job of pros and cons. That pros that religion is supposed to help stabilize your your eth your ethics and just kind of give you a guiding light to follow. But also the cons is that it's the reason religion can be argued that the cause of a lot of issues as well. It's not only society, politically, you, however you want to look at it. And his character was kind of a metaphor for that. Do you, would you agree? Oh yeah, I agree with 100% that, yeah, that it, it does, it does like point like a mirror at religion and show you that, you know, there are good things to it. And then yes, there are bad things to it. And it just really depends how, it really depends what the character brings to it, you know, what, what you know, us as humans bring to it that really affects it either way in, in which direction, you know. So that I really thought that it did a pretty good job of, of showing that. Honestly, it's, I mean, probably a little bit extreme <laughs> in some cases, but also maybe not really that extreme when you really think about it. So I think it did a pretty good job of showing us you know, different sides of the coin. Yes, I, I would 100% agree. And... Any now again, I I love Tom Holland, and I would I would assume you did as well. Was there oh, any yeah. other actor or character you specifically liked in this movie that would that you would recommend to someone to check this out? Oh man, I mean they all did such a good job. But I mean, if I were to really say like if you wanted to watch the movie for a specific performance, then yeah, Tom Holland, and then probably Robert Pattinson too, with his character. Okay, yeah, I mean he wasn't in it too much, but like, even oh, then his. Was- his he carried his presence of the character because he's supposed to be the backwater uh, like a backwater preacher like you said who just comes into town starts you know showing off his sermons and really he again being a good looking guy he definitely used that to his advantage as being uh-huh. done. like I said it was just kind of interest his his presence that yes he preaches God and he loves you know he loves religion but there's more to him than that and it's just a very dark presence I I really like that about him I would say. The other performance I I would recommend seeing was uh, just Bill Skarsgård's as his dad. Oh yes, yeah, Bill Skarsgård. It was nice to see him not in clown makeup. <laughs> yes, I mean I know he's been acting, you know, here and there, but I really haven't seen him, you know, and, and like just him being himself. I mean, he did a really good job as it, and I know he's in like a few shows here and there, but I haven't really watched them. So this was kind of like my introduction into just seeing him as a, a character actor and he did a really good job absolutely i do love him as pennywise the new one it chapter two was a little eh, but yeah. and then he played a small role in atomic blonde so i personally haven't seen him in a lot and so yeah. I, i'm sure he's i'm sure he's been other stuff like you said i just haven't seen all of it this one i just it was very surprising because he plays a an old war vet from world war Two, and he's just Again, it's just such a different thing. I never expected him to be such like a brutish character because he's still a little skinny, a little lanky. But he, again, he's just a force of nature, and so is Tom Holland. And you see yeah. that translated well. So, yeah, uh, Bill Skarsgård, Tom Holland, and so what was the other character? You, the other performance, you, Robert Pattinson, obviously. That was the other one you recommend. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, all of them did such a fantastic job and and playing the characters that they played. So it's hard to really say you know one did better over the other but i guess in terms of showcase and yeah it, it is definitely like tom holland's movie and then like i said earlier it was definitely the way the story was told was almost if someone was reading a book how'd you feel about the narration behind the this film it worked for me again it really did feel like i was watching a, a novel play out like you know this like this really seedy novel that someone was reading to me and I got to see like the, the visuals of it. It was like how I'd imagined me like reading a book and having the visuals in my head. So they really played out that way. And I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, that was, that's a nice touch. And I've seen a couple movies where they've done the whole narration thing. It's been more for comedic purposes, like in me, myself and Irene and Dukes of oh. Hazard. So to see it done as a much more serious context and kind of, providing that extra just like diving deep into the story i thought it was i thought it worked it was different and again i i I always say that i like my movies to kind of make me think to a certain extent or at least have them portray like portray the story through the actors emotions and and all that stuff oh my god i'm sorry that sounds terrible but yeah (laughs) it it worked for me so I, i just for those of you who 
want to check this out, just know that it has some narration, some narrating to it. But it it kind of propels the story. Maybe it won't for you, but you know, check it out. And it's it's something that we don't really see in a lot of movies nowadays. I know that's something that they used to do before in like older movies, but now it's just kind of. They they don't do that anymore. It's a little more show than than tell, which which is good. You know, you want emotions and story beats to come across through you know the acting and the way the performances play out. But there there was a certain like scenes, one scene in particular where I think the narration really did add to the movie. And I I mean I want I'm talking about it because it's it's a spoiler, but I think you might know which one I'm talking about. Where it, you know it just gives you that little bit of extra information to really just like hit you in the in the stomach like the emotional gut punch. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was it was pretty effective. Yeah, I I absolutely agree. Now, before we move on to Nola Holmes, what would you give this out of five stars? Five stars, five rockets, five bullets. I don't care. What would you recommend? (laughs) Five rantings. Oh Uh, yeah, that's five rantings. That's our rating right there. (laughs) Five rants a ranting. There we go. We can get into the song. (laughs) Christmas is coming up, so it's a good time to start thinking of them, man. Well, okay. The, I would give it. I would give it a solid three out of five stars. You know, it was a really good movie. The performances were all great. The movie itself wasn't like amazing, you know, per se. But it, it was a it was a good watch, and I did find enjoyment of it. So yeah, I would say it's, it's a good three out of five stars. It's on Netflix, so I, it's a different recommend for me. Okay. Yeah, I would absolutely recommend it. I'm gonna say. Three to five stars for sure. Three, no, oh my god. Three, oh, three, and a, two, five? No, <laughs> three to three and a half out of five stars. That's what I meant to say. Just because, again, the cast, all these actors and actresses, they they were made for that role, for their specific roles. The setting was pretty, it wasn't anything special. It was just a lot of woods, a lot of hills, and some rooms and stuff. So I can't really say much for the setting. It wasn't anything beautiful to see, in all honesty. The story was, it dragged on a little bit for me, but the story was still pretty solid. It all ties up beautifully at the end, like it all converges on itself. Yeah, the third act is where a lot of it starts coming together. And again, it was just a powerful performance. So I would give it more, but for me, it dragged on a little too much. And it could have been a little bit of a faster pace, but... Again, this was definitely like a very dramatic, very dark film. So if you're in the mood for it, give it a watch, especially with Halloween coming up. It's not necessarily a horror film or monster movie, but it's still just that the evil within humans and and regard with religion hiding behind religion, covering their true intentions that I would say that's definitely worth the watch. So three to three and a half out of five, I would give. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. And like I said, for anyone who maybe wants to watch, who who's who maybe has seen this movie and you want to watch something else, Place Beyond the Pines is another one to watch in reference to this, and also just kind of has like a good double feature in it, if anything. Yeah, and I also think uh, what was that movie called? With ah man, it was the one with Patrick Stewart and Anton Yelchin. The... Oh, great. Green Room, yeah, I think that's a, another good like recommendation where you see like the real evilness of human beings. I can see that. Okay, yeah, and honestly, <laughs> the- someone's in a particular mood to watch those kinds of movies. <laughs> yeah, cause the Green Room is definitely another one because it's it's basically some kids getting uh, attacked by Nazis, essentially neo Nazis. So. If you're in the mood to watch something dark like that, that's another one. And also, I would say that one refer- is coincides with this film just because it's like the evil of humans, like you said. Also, the like it was in a woodsy setting, like backwards. So I could, if you want to watch movies like that take place in that era or that kind of place, those are two to watch. Yeah. But let's move on. Uh, Enola Holmes. That that was uh, Millie Bobby Brown's new feature. It came on again on Netflix as well. Both of these are on Netflix, so. You'll find them pretty easily. And it, this one came out towards the end of last month on the 23rd of September. Directed by Harry Bradbeer, who who directed Fleabag. And again, it stars the fantastic Millie Bobby Brown, Henry Cavill as Sherlock Holmes, Sam Caflin as the oldest brother, Mycroft Holmes. And one of my favorite actresses, Helena Bonham Carter, as the matriarch of the Holmes family, Eudorian. Oh yeah, she's a treasure. She is. She's always been one of my favorite characters, especially or actresses, especially in, you know, Fight Club, uh, Sweeney Todd, uh, this movie too. And I just, I just love her as an actress. 
I wonder if this is like one of the one of the only roles as of recent that she's done not in a Tim Burton directed movie. Because I can't really think. I think I've only ever seen her. I mean, lately in just Tim Burton movie. Yeah, I can't think of the last thing she she hasn't really done a lot in a few years. Most probably because I think she's just you know living the family life and maybe she'll act or want to be a part of something if she wants to. So that's totally fine. But again, it was just great to see her in something. I get oh oh well, she wasn't Alice in Wonderland, but that's not again not too recent. So you know, but that was also Tim Burton, wasn't it? Yeah, or Tim or Tim Burton esque at least. So it was kind of different. That's kind of nice seeing her in like that, like Johnny Depp when he did uh, Black Mass, and that was like right after yeah. the Pirates movies or in between the Pirates movies. It was. It's always nice seeing these actors jump out of something that they're used to, and that's what both of these movies do. Like Tom Holland and Sebastian Stan out of the MCU. This one, Helena Bonham Carter out of. Uh, you know, the Tim Burton scene. <laughs> and Millie Bobby Brown out of Stranger Things. Like, again, she's. Oh, yeah. She hasn't done a whole lot outside Stranger Things. The only other thing I really know of is Godzilla King of the Monsters, which was, again, again very disappointing. Damn. Yeah, I mean, she didn't have a lot of work with at all in that movie. No, she still did a good, good job. But even then, like you said, there wasn't enough to really say, oh my gosh, she's fantastic. It was just cool. You're in this. Great job. Yeah. Like a lot of the other actors, and I'm like, oh, cool, you're in this, blah, whatever. <laughs> the movie's just kind of mm, wet blanket. Mm-hmm. But this one was interesting just because, again, Henry Cavill does play Sherlock Holmes fantastically, but it doesn't center on him. It centers on the youngest of the Holmes family, Enola Holmes, and definitely a, a very powerful story on a young independent woman who's growing up and kind of seeing the world outside of what she's growing up in that, you know, you should fight for yourself. You need to be educated. You need to basically learn to be on your own. And it's like, no, society has different ways of thinking, especially because it took place in the 1800s. Do you yeah, I think so. Yeah. Just uh, definitely like, a, like the other Sherlock Holmes, like, like the Robert Downey juniors in that era, like industrial revolution era. And yeah, I. How would you think of it? Let me ask you that first. Like, what what are your thoughts on it? I thought it was a really fun movie to watch. Like, it was one of those like YA movies, like young adult movies, where people, you know, that I mean, I don't know, guys, kind of like a Hunger Games esque type, like you know, that just like that like age group. But I thought it was really well done for for that type of movie. Like, it didn't play into a lot of the tropes that we do see in those movies and that kind of tend to have gotten really just kind of grading and old as of late. So I'm glad it didn't pay like play into those. Uh, it really went into just like, I guess a coming of age for her as a character and her, you know, becoming it like, like you said, like an independent woman in that era and really coming into her own as a member of the Holmes family. So again, I mean, it's a character I had like really no familiarity with at all. And after this movie, I'm, I'm more interested in maybe seeing more. Yeah, I, I could see the. I, I concur on some of your thoughts. The young adult feel I definitely got uh, in several scenes in the movie, and you know, to each their own. I just I, it was nice to see Millie Bobby Brown again outside of something like Stranger Things, and you know, something so pop culture based. And not to say Sherlock Holmes is not part of popular culture because he's one of the most renowned characters of all of literature, mm-hmm. but. It, it was definitely interesting because I've never heard of Enola Holmes before they made this movie, so I don't know if she was a character to begin with or if they did it just for this one. Either way, it worked for me. It was nice seeing her being a very capable young lady and very resourceful and just knowledgeable in general because they're, they're, I'm sure if it was like done either in like an American fashion or something else, it would have been that she's more she needs more help, I guess, from a man, if that makes sense. And I know that's been a trope with movies when they have female characters there's always a male character to save them and this one definitely wasn't the case she was able to handle her own business if you will yeah and then there's there's a male character for her to play off of in the movie but luckily the movie didn't ever go in that direction where it it defined the entire movie or her as a character that the relationship just completely took it over and didn't like really service her as a character i thought they did a good job of avoiding that Yes, and like Devil All the Time, this one also has a very interesting way of telling the story in which Enola Holmes, she breaks the fourth wall a lot. So she will look at the camera and ask us, 
what would you think we should do or, or you know what I mean kind of thing. And uh, I don't know if it worked for me. There were times I thought, okay, this is funny. And other times I just thought like, okay, this is a little too played out. Like I get it. Given Deadpool is constantly breaking the fourth wall, but we know that about him. So I think maybe it was me not going into it thinking she was going to break the fourth wall the whole time. I thought that was just for like promotions and stuff. I, I kind of was, it turned me off at some points while other points I, I agreed. I went along with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, I really enjoyed the, the fourth wall breaking. I thought it was, I thought it added a little more to her character and especially in terms of acting showcase for uh, Millie Bobby Brown. I thought it really did a good job of making her endearing and really charismatic as a character. Which, you know, like I said, we really haven't gotten to see from her a lot with uh, her character Eleven being a little more stoic and not really, like, emotionally expressive. And then her having nothing to work with in the Godzilla movie. So I thought it was a really good showcase for her as an actress with the fourth wall breaking and her character in the movie. So I enjoyed it. It, it never got to that point where I thought it was, like, a little too much. I mean, it would have been annoying had, like, during certain scenes in the movie where, like, they would look at the ca- uh, camera and be like, ah, you see? So I'm glad they didn't really, like, to play into that too much where it took away from the emotionality of what was going on in the scenes. It just like added to comedic beats. Yeah. And and that's fair to say, like I said, for me, there were some parts where I just thought, again, I don't want to spoil anything. I just thought, eh, it's, it's okay. You didn't really need to do that. But for the most part, she, she never failed. She was a great Enola Holmes. And like you said that if you would, so you would agree that if you, if there were to make a sequel or announce a sequel, would you be excited? Yes or no? Yeah, I would. I would actually. I would be excited to see more from her. And if we get more Henry Cavill, as you know, in addition to it, that's a that's just a cherry on top. <laughs> yeah, these are some of my favorite, like up and not up and coming, but just actors. I I want to keep seeing more of like Henry Cavill. He was my favorite Superman, and he was in Man from Uncle. Like he's just a great addition to a cast. And in Mission Impossible, easily one of my favorite villains in that whole franchise. Uh, Sam Kaplan, my first experience with him was Hunger Games Part 2, where he yeah. played, uh, oh my God, what was his name, Finnick? Yes, I believe his name was like Finnick O'Dare, I think? Something like that. Something like that, yeah. I just <laughs> love him. <laughs> I just love seeing his work in that one just because he was a, a badass character. I remember when I first saw it because he worked with the Trident and Spear. I thought he would be great for a young Aquaman if they ever did that. Uh-huh. And, and again, it was just seeing Helena Bonham Carter as a much more matriarchal character, someone not a villain or some sort of super evil person. It was kind of nice to see that just because, again, she was in The Queen and Alice in Wonderland. She was Sweeney Todd, where she was a very vicious character in that. Or yeah, it's nice character. seeing her being like a more normal <laughs> character, I guess you could say. Air quotes on the normal. Air, air quotes <laughs> normal, yeah. Just not like there's not a, like a crazy out there caricature. No, not not something physically crazy, but it was very. I, I really admire. I know there's a lot of, you know, debate on these films that oh my god, they're only just they're just trying to empower women, all this stuff strictly for that. It's like well, you can argue that for this one, but I, I just see it as that girls can do just as much as guys can sometimes even better and this is definitely one where if i were to see sherlock holmes and nola holmes i'm like i would place my bet on enola strictly just because she's very capable like her brother and i would love to see them if they did do a sequel i'd be excited for it i would love to see henry cavill's addition to it but as like a sidekick like a like a compliment not necessarily like a main part you know what i mean yeah, I really would dig more of his uh, his character being, like you said, like a side character to her story, because I think he really complements her pretty well in terms of their character dynamic. And just to just to speak on something you said you know, a little bit earlier, that I did enjoy that, yeah, like they, they were able to empower her as a character in a way that it was unique to her. Like they didn't just make her Sherlock Holmes, but a young girl, you know, like she was very much a different character where, you know, her resourcefulness and like her her scrappiness are what really define her as a character, not just being like this, this like really like, uh, I guess I would say emotionally distant, reclusive detective that, you know, Sherlock is. She, she has a little more to her than that. So I'm glad they were able to do that and not just make, like, again, like I said, Sherlock Holmes, but girl, you know? Yeah, and another, another feeling I had was a bit of guilt, I guess, just because this movie does talk about, you know, Again, it it does touch upon you know women wanting to be independent and, and as well as they should. It's and you know, like I said, I just it it touched upon the the whole empowering 
of women in a way that it was it just puts that into perspective like you know there's a couple there's one scene where the maid and nola holmes is not i guess maid i would consider her a character like that just a woman who kind of helps around the holmes mansion she taught she's talking to sherlock saying you know you you guys have it so easy where she's a young girl she can't do as much as you guys can strictly because of society like Mm -hmm. it's just and it kind of it does make you think like again like yeah, that that is unfortunate because again, she's very capable, she's knowledgeable, but society wouldn't accept that just because there's still that fact that women should just be mothers and wives, nothing else, especially in that part of society in England. So, yeah, and you really can't say that all this stuff is just being forced into the story because it is historically accurate <laughs> to the time that it takes place, and so like this stuff really happened. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with a character who wants to break free of that you know very superman-esque you know what if a child dreamed of being something other than what society intended for him or her you know what if they want to be someone greater and that's why that's why i enjoyed the most about that is that enola was taking she was trying to take her destiny on on her own hands not letting anyone dictate that and that's just the whole theme is that you choose for yourself what you want don't let anybody else tell you what you should be you got to go out and decide yourself yeah, and then also plays into the uh, the character uh, the character journey of uh, her male counterpart in the movie, who I forget, really forget his name because I mean, it was a long title. <laughs> what his know name was Tewksbury, I think. Yeah, something like that. But yeah, okay. the, the, the the other boy that she's in on the adventure with, you know, that plays into his his character journey as well. So again, like they did a really good job of that. Yeah, if I, if they do make a sequel, which I'm kind of keeping my fingers crossed that they do, I would love to see a like an older version of Millie. Like, well, I mean, again, it will probably be at least with everything going on, probably at least another few years, a year or two before we get a sequel. So that gives it like a Millie Bobby Brown enough time to like you know age up a little bit. And I would love to see a much more adult version of her, where you know maybe she's a little more violent, a little more adult humor mixed into it. You know, not not, not that I'm saying she needs to just be. It needs to be like a raunchy, like massacre of a movie. I'm just saying it would be nice to see like the progression of her character in that time. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think what you're trying to say is like just to see instead of her like ha- having this coming of age, we'll get to see her now as an adult and you know handling a more like adult issues in that time. I mean, I just kept getting Assassin's Creed vibe from her, like the the one that took place in Industrial Revolution in England. I oh, Syndicate? Like, Syndicate, yeah. I, I could. I was watching and I thought, she'd be a really cool assassin if they did that. Just because, again, you age her up a little bit. Maybe she, you know, uh, does more stunt work and stuff. It's like, Millie Bobby Brown could be an assassin, part of the creed. So, hint, hint, <laughs> wink, wink. I will say, though, that in, in for this movie, that the, the action and the violence really kind of took me by surprise in this movie. Like, things get pretty intense. Yeah, like I said, they she definitely gets put through the ringer, but it's it's what she goes through that made me really love her character that she can hold her own and and you you just get that. And it was again the cast the supporting cast was great where Sherlock was a great detective, but he didn't over overcome the he didn't dominate the story that it was more of the name Holmes is becoming more prominent and people said, "Oh, Enola, don't ruin that." But she's like, "I'm embracing it and I am part contributing to that." So Ratings wise, what would you give it? I'd also give this one a three out of five. Really good movie, enjoyable watch. You know, uh, a little bit long in the tooth. I know that you that you had a similar uh, complaint about the movie. If I were to have a complaint about the movie, that yet yeah, is it is a little long. I think it's a little over like two hours long, and I feel like it. They could, if they would have maybe cut it or like sped it up uh, the pacing a little bit. It, overall, I thought it was an enjoyable movie. Yes, I would give it a three and a half to four actually, just because. Yes, it, while it was a little long, and I know the fourth person, the fourth the fourth wall, 16 walls, kind of, <laughs> it kind of turned me off from time to time. But again, just the fact that she's no nonsense, it was just more of her, Millie Bobby Brown's performance and the supporting cast that really made this movie enjoyable. And again, it, it's one of those movies I would love to see a sequel to. So Netflix, sign off on it. Ratings-wise, it's already doing really well, so... That's already that's good enough outlook for to warrant a sequel, in my opinion. Yeah, that would I would like to see more. Yeah, definitely. If this is the start of a franchise, I'm in. 
Before we end on this, is speaking of sequels and spinoffs, there's like three different Resident Evil movies by Netflix. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. Wait, is, is the the one that was announced today also a Netflix movie? Well, because there's the there's the CGI movie that got announced last week or two weeks ago. So we have that one that's supposed to be more accurate to the games because it has Leon Kennedy and Claire Redfield or Joan Valentine in it. And today's cast is just uh, it announced a live action. And then I remember they were talking about another live action series that is a different point in Resident Evil. It's taking more liberties with it like the original movies did. So it's just like a cool, I guess. I don't know how I feel about all these Resident Evils coming to Netflix. It'll be interesting to see, though. I mean, what are you thinking? I mean, like I was telling you before, there's no way that they can do any worse than the movies that we've already gotten. So, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to hold my breath for anything great, but I won't be surprised if it's not good. But I'd be very surprised if it's as bad or worse than what we have already. I, again, I mean, I just I look at it that yeah, there have been so many bad movies. Again, if you love the the Mia Jovovich Resident Evil movies, it's fine. That's that's what you that's what you like. No problems. But I personally hate those movies because they are just, <laughs> they are utter utter garbage. By my opinion, strictly my opinion. Not saying you know that's a fact, but it's just one of those things. Like I can't stand them because. If you've played the Resident Evil games or even seen the other CGI films, the animated films that have come out in recent years, there's good source material behind it. There's a lot of, oh, yeah. you know, either great action or great horror. And the Mia Jovovich movies just did never achieve that. It was just all CGI garbage. Yeah, it was like they were trying to integrate like the Matrix <laughs> into Resident Evil with this over the top wire action with a character that had nothing to do with the games. And then when the characters from the games showed up in those movies, they were not at all like the, the characters that we, we knew. Yeah, and again, there's that one that Netflix announced earlier this year where it's supposed to take it's supposed to be Albert Wesker's children and in the future. And that one, again, sounds like it's going on the Mia Jovovich route, which I don't want anything to do with. The CGI film, haven't heard much about, but it looks great. I mean, I know in our private talks you've talked about how you're not you wanted more live action, but today's cast, I would hope, satisfied your need for wanting to see live action. Am I correct? Or are you still uh, on it? I mean, I'm more interested than <laughs> I was before. So, that, I mean, I guess that's a positive sign. I mean, again, the cast alone, Ska- Ka- Kaya Scodelero, I, Scodelario, I can't say her name, but she was in Crawl, Pirates, um, Dead Men Tell No Tales. Is that mm-hmm. the last one? Yeah, Dead Men Tell No Tales. Yes. She was Barbosa's daughter in that one, and in Crawl, she fought the the alligators in her dad's house. Which <laughs> she fought them gators in the house. <laughs> <laughs> no one gave her a shovel, though, unfortunately. No, she didn't have a shovel. <laughs> she had it. <laughs> so her as Claire Redfield, which I immediately can see. That's a good Robbie, pick. Robbie and Mel as Chris Redfield. I never thought about it, and then when I think about, it, I was like, "Oh my god, that's good." Yeah, that's he's perfect good. for a young Chris Redfield. And even if they if it does well and they keep doing more, seeing him become more grizzled, Chris Redfield would be awesome. Uh, Hannah John Kamen is Jill Valentine, who was in Ant Man and the Wasp, Ready Player One, and I can't think of anything on the top. Ant Man and the Wasp, she was the ghost character, and yeah. in Ready Player One, she was a phenomenal like a henchman, right? Yeah, she was a uh, no- Nolan's henchman slash like uh, warrant. The uh, oh my god, what are those centers called? Uh, the dis not discipline centers. I forgot, but the centers that people had to pay their debts essentially for the game. Uh-huh. She was that character, and even Avon Joe. Uh, again, I am sorry if I'm butchering the names. I have never seen him in anything besides Zombie Land Two. He was the hippie who was upset yeah. the, the sister. He's no, playing. Do weed. I look like someone who has weed? <laughs> Boom! Boom! <laughs> <laughs> And he's like stealing all these music, passing it off as his own. Oh my god, he robbed Bob Dylan in that movie. How dare he? His character, at least. How dare his character uh-huh. rob that? He, he's a, he's a, he's definitely an outside pick for Leon Kennedy. But I mean, I'm 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 willing to see how he plays the character. Honestly, seeing a side by side image of the remastered 
Leon and then seeing him, they definitely have a same like jawline. Like they have a strong jaw. And if if he can if he can not bulk up too much because we don't want just ridiculous caricatures like the video games. If he <laughs> yeah. If he can bulk up a little bit, maybe get his hairstyle a little bit close to Leon, I think we got something going with that. Because he's, he's again, I've only seen him as a comedic role, but let alone sometimes comedic actors are the best dramatic actors possible. Yeah, and then also like our sample size on him is very small. So, I mean, who knows? He might be, he might be actually really great. We just don't know it. <laughs> And then the other actors that really got me excited was Tom Hopper, who's the big guy from Umbrella Academy. He was one of the he was one of the guys that got burnt by the dragon in Game of Thrones in like the sixth season. He was the the father and the son. The oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. I forgot their names, but he was they came from a dick family, so it doesn't. They, no, weren't they related to uh, Tarly? They were Tarleys, yeah. right? Tarly, House Tarly. He was the son of House Tarly that got burnt alive by. Daenerys. Uh, he is playing Albert Wesker, which again, that's a good pick too, right? I could totally see it because he's got the voice. He's he can be big and buff if he wants to be, and he's supposed to be pretty tall too. So I know a tall Wesker would definitely be pretty intimidating. And then Neil McDonough from Band of Brothers. He played uh, Jack yeah. Hyde, Walking Tall. He is supposed good. to be Doctor or supposed to be William Birkin, which reminds oh, yeah. who Birkin is in the games again. He's the one who creates the virus that is the outbreak in, in Raccoon City. Oh, so he created the T virus. Yes. Okay, I can definitely. Or G. That. I think it was the G virus that he created. But yes. But I mean, it's neither here nor there. You know, he, he's one of the doctors that works for Umbrella that creates one of the viruses that you know causes the outbreak. So there are a lot of G, T, C, D, A. Z. All them. All the alphabet. All. Why? <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, but like I said, that one I just had to share that I'm actually really excited for that one just because the cast already looks like the characters. So if if the directors and writers can really put love into this, the, the script, because from what I've seen, the directors, like, we want to go back to 1990s. We want to make it a horror. Like, we do want to make it scary. I, I, that passion already is giving me good vibes for it. Yeah, as long as it's not, like I said, a Matrix wannabe action movie, then... I don't see how they can mess it up that bad. <laughs> yeah, if anything, it's if it's if it's like the last CGI movie I really liked, the most recent one came out a couple years ago. That was Resident Evil. Uh, shoot, Damnation? I don't remember. No, not was it Damnation? Let me look it up real quick. But that one I really liked how it mixed gun fu like from John Wick while fighting zombies. I think if they can kind of do a more realistic version of that with the zombies, I'd be fine. That's the kind of action I would like. Yeah, as long as they they play more into like the horror aspect of it as opposed to like the this crazy action, then then yeah, I'm in. Yeah, and it was Resident Evil Vendetta. That's that was the the crazy, Vendetta. That was the gun fu one, but uh, like I said, I'm I'm hopeful for it just because I know Netflix. They have actually have been delivering better quality films. So again, I'm I'm hopeful. Okay, so this live action movie is going to be a Netflix movie. Yeah, I'm a thousand percent sure it's on Netflix. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah. they know Netflix is a, is really a the ruin to pay for all kinds of things. So, okay, I'm in. The the movies have been better as of late. I will say that. Whereas yeah, like before, the two, when, like the two we talked about today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then Extraction earlier this year. So they they're really coming out with more solid films. Whereas before it was like Netflix movie. Ooh, I don't know. Especially Adam Sandler's movies. I will never watch those. Oh, yeah, we don't talk about those. No, we're not talking about those, but... <laughs> yeah, that's... I mean, again, there's not a lot of entertainment coming out. We will talk about that next time, about how we're feeling about the studios just pulling everything from this year, essentially, and even moving things next year. It's it's definitely going to be rough. So we'll talk about that next time, and keep on the lookout on our, on our page because we will be talking about some Halloween favorites of ours for whether it be a monster movie, a family movie, uh, a supernatural movie, like ghosts or demons, stuff like that. Oh, yeah. The month of October is going to be a lot of fun. Yes, I, I have begun watching my horror movies. I like to start with the Ghostbusters, as usual, because that's a good way to get into mm -hmm. it. But that will be for next time. So let's... Uh... Like I said, everybody, you know, like, subscribe, throw in your thoughts on these movies, or if you have any questions on them, please 
comments, uh, you know, let us know. What, what other questions and stuff do you have? We'll, we'll be in mind to look out for those too. So thank you everybody for listening. Vern, I will talk to you soon. All right, man. I'll catch you on the flippity flap. Flip flop, flippity bop, bop, boop, bop. <laughs> Peace, good sir. Adios, man. Everybody be nice, be good to each other, and be safe. Yep. Stay bodacious and stay ranting for everybody. Oh, yeah. <laughs>